In today's video, we're going to be discussing the pre-hydro visual inspection. I have a group of tanks here. I need to get ready for hydro. First, I must do a visual inspection. Why do we do a visual inspection before hydro? If they can't pass the visual, no need to hydro test. Stay tuned. We're going to get started real soon. When inspecting scuba cylinders, we always start with the exterior. We look at the walls in its entirety. We look at the bottom of the tank. What are we are looking for? We're looking for scratches, dings, gouges, pitting, anything that can compromise the integrity of the tank. We look at the shape of the actual tank. We put a straight edge along the walls of the tank. We can spin the tank around and look for any kind of imperfections or banana shape. Slight banana shape is okay. Excessive banana shape, no good. We look at the interior. This tank looked really good inside, nice and clean, nothing to worry about. Now we move on to the next step, we inspect the threads. When inspecting the neck threads, we use a mirror and we use a light. We're looking for any kind of imperfections in the threads, corrosion, pitting, missing threads, possibly even neck cracks. These are modern tanks made from 60, 61 aluminum. The older tanks made from 6351 we're susceptible to neck cracking. But that's a whole other video. This tank looks good. Tank mesh, tank boots, gotta come off. There we go. This next tank has a little bit more going on. I can already see a lot of corrosion underneath the paint, a lot of loose paint chipping off and there's a lot of paint blisters all around the actual tank itself. I got it scraped out, I got to see what's underneath there. Can't give that a pass or a visual without looking underneath that paint. It's got to go. You can see how quickly that paint comes off. Even if the blister hasn't broken through the paint, you can just see the blister. You got to get it off. That can't stay on. One thing I like to do after I scrape a tank, because even though I scrape a lot of the actual oxidation off, you can still see some white oxidation sticking to the tank. And I don't want to scrape too hard with the actual razor. So I use a sanding sponge. I wet it, I wet the tank, and I do a little sanding. And it's just a light sanding, and all I'm doing is removing oxidation. I'm not going after removing aluminum, that's not my target. Then I'll take a paper towel or a rag and wipe it clean. Look at that, much better. You can see all these markings, all these dark markings around there. That's the oxidation that has actually marked the tank. And some spots are rough, but not quite deep pitting, but there is some rough spots. So let's look inside this tank. Let's see what we have. Looks pretty good. Nice and clean. The walls are clean. The bottom's clean. And I see a little corrosion at the top of the actual neck of the tank, right above the o-ring gland. And I go back to my razor and just give it a little scrape. See how easy that scrapes out. And use a brush. Once I clean the threads, I clean the top of the neck of the tank and all that loose powder. Just give it a quick burst of air, blow it out and away from the tank. Now for the neck threads. When visually inspecting a steel tank for hydro, boots got to come off and we do the same thing that we did with the aluminum. The exterior, the bottom, spin the tank around. This one actually looks really good so I don't need to spend much time on the exterior of this tank. One thing in addition that we do with steel that we do not do with aluminum is the hammer test. A good steel will have a bell tone when struck with a hammer. If it has a dull, see the difference? The bell tone tells you that the steel is still elastic. If you get that thunk sound, the steel got rigid. No good. Let's look inside the steel tank now. Wow, this tank looks really good inside. Nice finish. If you're interested in becoming a VIP inspector, I do offer classes here. It is a three-year certification. Now keep in mind, OSHA standards 
1910.101. Any person handling a pressurized cylinder of 29 psi slash 2 bars or higher is mandated to be trained in the handling of cylinders. It is a federal law. You must be certified. Your employer's got 90 days to get you trained and certified. I do offer the class here. Call the shop and I'll give you all the details. Thanks for joining us today at Scuba Tech. I enjoyed bringing you this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like, subscribe, and that notification bell. Next video I'm working on is hydro testing. So please stand by. Stay tuned for hydro testing. Thanks again.